What a shitty day out today. It's like fucking 40 degrees, raining. I get out and test some of these things, but this is gonna happen because I don't feel like getting sick. I had to finally break down like the heater in the shop. What we're gonna do is pour to 500 a day. This is Chuck's, he's out on the west coast. Um, we're gonna do suspension kit, bar box, full mod with machine work. Uh, we'll rip her down and pause the video. I'll show you guys. And then when it's on the lathe, I'll show you it after we grind it. Grinding station's all messed up right now. I really gotta clean the shop. It's freaking horrible in here, but uh, trying to get caught up and get stuff done. So it's like a balance game laying around here. But well, it is what it is. I get this ripped down. These ripped down really easy. I actually like working on these. But well, we'll rip her down on video. And then uh, after that, like I said, we'll show you some machine work, uh, show you some of the port work, and then later in the week, probably Saturday or Sunday before it gets nice, uh, we'll take some of these out and run them. We got a 2186, a 372, a 261, a 395, so we definitely got some saws to run. But uh, Weather is what's holding us back right now. But that's fall in Wisconsin. Older I get, the more I hate it. It could be worse though. Another month or so here. Probably have a foot of freaking snow on the ground. I've done so many of these, I try to rip one of these down in my sleep. Sounds like the pilot light has turned up a little bit. If we light on fire someday, it'll make a really interesting video for everybody, right? I was worried about these when they first came out, but they sure seem like they're a real dependable saw. Lots of the problems with them, if you ever run into problems with them, either this primer bulb is going to have a hole, one of these steel lines are going to have a hole. They're real sensitive to a, it's a pressurized system, so they're real sensitive to that, so. Typically, if, if there's like a runability, reason that's what it's gonna be on these. Other than that, I I don't do a lot of repair work, but I haven't heard or ran into a whole lot of other issues with them. I mean, if you have, feel free to tell me about them, but so far they've been fairly decent saws for the most part from everything I've seen. Pretty strong running factory saws if you want a hot rod, kind of semi-hot rod saw right out of the box. 
pretty hard to go wrong with them. 400 is kind of like that too. I like pulling these lines off down off the injector, then you can't really mix them up. Kind of just go where they go. You got an impulse down bottom. Whole tank comes off, easy cheesy, right? Now our handle should cover it off. So now we have a bench till we're done. Sometimes you gotta pry them out a little bit, but. For the most part, no big deal. Now we got both up here. Then you're gonna have a ground on this injector you gotta pull off. I think I've done a video taking one of these apart not that long ago. Real simple. This one pot well, might not be a ground, it might be I'm not sure what it is, but you got. Guess I shouldn't go saying without knowing since it's very possibly not a ground. It's probably more or less the hot wire to the injector, but you got one wire to pull off. Just like that, we're ready, more or less ready to pop the cylinder off now. Be real. As far as this assembly, real easy sauce. About as easy as you can get nowadays. I like pulling the plug in the deep counter with the cylinder still on the saw. So you uh, it's got a little leverage. Not like trying to hold a cylinder between your legs and bust the plug loose or a deep counter. Always a little leery of these steel decals. Now I had one of these stripped right from the factory. Put it loose and it just spun. Luckily that put the saw back together and it was still under warranty, so they're warranting the cylinder. But uh, I never ran into that for that time, so now I'm leery every time I go to pull one. Probably I'll never run into it again either. Just must up. Over tighten it at the viewing. Should pull right off of here. We're going to reuse this gasket, so I'm going to be a little careful with it. I don't want to bend the crap all of it. Now this black piece is your what holds your boot on, so we'll zip this other bolt out here. You got four of these, one you gotta take off first to get the now these are kind of tight, so you gotta get on your own. Gold master injector rope. Getting these off sometimes can be the biggest pain in the whole disassembly. When it comes, it'll come. It's kind of wiggle jiggle it. It's kind of got to go straight up. There it starts. And I leave the boot right in there. Then you don't got to force it back in there and just pop it off your intake there. Then you got three more bolts and this whole intake and injector assembly will I'll come right off here, just got an o-ring under it. Just a 
green O-ring, so all this seals it. If you guys haven't seen it, one of these, they're really not a strat design. They're a bottom sucker. Conventional four ports, no air ports. Real short stroke motor, that's why they're so ready. So also they can take uh, quite a bit of intake timing because of that reason. But move you guys up, let you guys look at the case. It's kind of how they do it, it's kind of like the 462s. But the 462s are strats, so but uh you can't do a lot to these lower ones because the case has got a divider in it. I mean, I'm sure all you get, most of you guys have had these apart by now, but real simple, simple and sweet. So uh, I'll get it jigged up for the lathe. I'm not gonna waste your guys' time watching me jig it up, and um, then we'll add the uh, we'll add the band cut and the base cut, and then I'll I'll be back when we look at the timing on the saw. After we check our squish final, we'll pull off the recoil. So we gotta pull this flywheel because your uh, magnets that control your fuel injection are real strong on these. There ain't no way you're timing that saw with that flywheel on. So when we get back to looking at the timing, uh, we'll boot the camera back up and uh, we'll look at the timing, talk about where we're gonna put it, and then we'll grind it and look at the ground cylinder. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, we got it all set up to cut the band. When you guys do this, make sure you dial it in. You wanna dial it in there and there. You don't really want any more runoff than that. I see guys all the time say, oh, the cylinder's a little, they get frustrated and say, oh, the cylinder's a little out of round or, or there's that variance. But all you're gonna do is number one, you're gonna have squish readings from side to side that don't match and when you go to cut the band you're going to be grinding into the plating on one side to cut it flush on the other side it's just making it harder not to take the extra five minutes to not dial that in um i'm not gonna videotape when we do the actual cut because it's just too hard with angles and stuff but uh i'll sure to shoot a short video after we're done so you can see the band we're gonna take about 30 thousandths out of the band. There's the final product. We're gonna rig her back up and cut the base now. All right, we're ready for the base cut. We're getting closer and closer, guys. One thing I like to do when I cut bases is, is a live center with a block. Don't ram the live center right into the cylinder. That way, after we get the cylinder on, we put the dial indicator on, tap that cylinder on and get it real true. Um, one thing never to forget when doing this we're trying to make these better than factory. We want these truer than factory. We want the ports timed better than factory. We're trying to make these better than factory. So don't slop through it if you're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna take about 40 thousandths off the base here. We'll see if we can get a little bit of the cutting on video here.
take about 10 thousandths at a time. I already took 10 before I started recording, so we're going to make two more passes. The last pass, we're going to do real slow with some WD-40 so we get a nice finish for the gasket to seal. I'm going to grab some WD-40 and we'll do our final pass here. And that's that. I'll see you guys back in a couple minutes and we'll check out the port timing. All right, we're done with all the machine work. Cylinders back installed temporarily. We got our wheel centered here. If you look, we got 20 degrees. 20 degrees, so we'll pull the stop and we'll get grab our uh, post machine work timing numbers. Grab a 10 so I can read them down. So we went about 35 thousandths on the band and then we took uh, it was over 40 off the base. I don't remember the exact number but uh, spin it the way it goes. Best way to do this with a ring, we're gonna do that after here. So we're at about 109. Spin it around so we can see the intake here. Which they're on low on these because they're our short stroke motors. It's probably gonna be about 85 about 86, 87. And we'll check our transfer. And we are about 1, 10, 20, 120, 125. I like the last one we did of these, so what we're probably going to do with it, we're probably going to go 102, 118. And we're going to leave that intake at 87. Then just widen everything off. Here's the magnets I was talking to you guys about. With that flywheel on there, you'll never time one of these. So it's just mainly wasting time even attempting to do that. But uh, we're gonna pop it off, mark everything with a ring, mark all our whisks, 
You gotta be careful on your exhaust port on these new steels. All, pretty much all your new steels are gonna run uh, ring pin on the left side of the port. You can widen them a little bit, but don't get wild with them. You'll uh, eat a ring in a hurry. But we'll get her ground up and then we'll show you a video of the finished product. And then hopefully we get a video of this thing in wood this weekend and we can see how it cuts. But uh, they turn out pretty good, decent saw. I think I still prefer the 461s a little more, but it is what it is. They're going out, these are coming in, so. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, we're about ready to throw her together. Kind of ignore this vase. It just looks real messed up with the light on the camera. It's because I cut it with lube, so it's kind of like half polished. They, they're not actual marks you can feel. Just camera nonsense. But as you can see, we got a nice bevel around all the ports. Widen the exhaust, widen the intake. We did not lower it at all. Raised all the transfers, reshaped them a little bit. Exhaust, a nice bevel, nice squish band. We're getting ready to reassemble. Um, hopefully we can have a video of this in wood sometime this weekend, so stay tuned to that. Uh, you can swing by the website if you're interested in having a saw done. It's BuxtonWorksaws.com. And I hope you all have a good day. If you want more videos like this, let me know. I typically don't make them this long, but I thought we'd go into a little more detail today, so hopefully it works out.